Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today is truly, truly, truly a special unboxing. We have today was one of the most anticipated drops of the year. There's a lot of history behind this shoe, a lot to talk about with this shoe. Let's go ahead and get right into it. Now, as usual, you have a staple of the Amma Manier releases. You have this beautiful sleeve with the A logo for Amma Manier on it. And once you pull out the box from the sleeve, I'll go ahead and put that to the side. You have what appears to be a standard Air Jordan 12 box, except a few little differences. One, of course, being the Amma Manier on each side of the box. And before I open the box, we'll go ahead and read the size tag. Size tag does, in fact, read women's Air Jordan 12 Retro SP, black, black burgundy crush. And of course, once you open up the box, you have the picture of Mike looking beat up and distressed. This is the infamous flu game in which Mike played with the flu in the finals against the Utah Jazz. Of course, you have that tissue paper that has the Amma Manier logo on it. And then finally, ladies and gentlemen, I'm beyond pleased to present to you the Air Jordan 12 women's Amma Manier. If you're new to the channel, what we do around here is we talk about the shoe and then we talk about the shoe. First up on the bottom, you had that herringbone traction pad, one of the greatest traction patterns that Jordan Brand has ever put on their shoes. Very good for performance and it just looks pretty snazzy on the bottom. In between these ribs, you have the carbon fiber strength plate, which is used for rigidity and stiffness, as well as having a lightweight feel to it. At the top of the forefoot on the tip, you have the Jumpman logo with the number 23. Coming up to the lateral side of the shoe, you have this nice rubber sole and this dark burgundy color. And again, you have this nameplate, which on this particular one does say Jumpman. And I do believe it says Jumpman on all of the other Jordan 12s. Down at the bottom, this shoe does have some kind of faux snakeskin or reptile pattern. Hopefully the camera was picking this one up. Now the material on this shoe is absolutely beautiful. I know a lot of the early images and even some of the images as of late had the suede looking very, very, very ashy. Now I will be the first to admit that it's not the blackest, deepest black suede that you're ever gonna see, but it is nice. And I do think that once it gets on foot and it does photograph in certain lights, you'll be more than pleased with the way this suede looks. Before you get to that part though, on the bottom, you do have a longer hair suede in that burgundy crushed colorway, which is really nice. And again, you have the aforementioned black suede at the top. For those of you who are sticklers for quality, if I rub my finger on it, hopefully the camera will pick this up. You should see some movement in the suede, indicating a nice grade of suede on the shoe. You have this black waxy rope lace, which is adorned by these burnt maybe silver or brushed silver or maybe brushed bronze. I can't really tell. I'm not really a metallurgist or a metal expert guy but uh, I think they're actually plastic, but they're made to look like metal. Hopefully the camera will pick this up and I'll try to get this squeezed in there. But if you look at the tongue, it does say the word two and somewhere down there it says the number three, actually written as a number. Finishing off the tongue, you have a black plastic Jumpman logo, which is I guess maybe glued or at least somewhat stitched to the top of the tongue. I would be remiss if I also didn't mention on the other tongue, there's actually a glossy A, again, the Amma Manier logo. On the back tab of the shoes, you have two different sayings. On the left shoe, you have what is your standard Air Jordan tag, which simply reads Jordan, quality inspired by the greatest player ever. As you can see, it's written there, and at the top, you have that Jumpman logo. However, on the right shoe, it says Ama Manier. At this point, if you're gonna co-brand the shoe, this is how you co-brand the shoe. It appears that both of the insoles are the same, they are burgundy crushed with a white Jumpman logo on the inside. And again, another beautiful staple of the Amma Manier brand is the quilted sock liners. I think that is absolutely amazing. Love that touch and I love that Amma Manier does that to their kicks. Now, as I mentioned earlier, this shoe is based off of the flu game, which unfortunately escapes my collection. Maybe someday, but as of right now, no. The black and red flu game that Mike Jordan played against the Utah Jazz, and I guess at this time is 1997, this shoe was what this is, that shoe is what this is based on. Also part of the course with Amma Manier is a beautiful hang tag that says Amma Manier on each side. It's that crushed burgundy colorway with black and, you know, burgundy crush all over it. Very nice. Very, very dope touch. I may be wrong about this, so don't quote me, but I believe these actual pleats in the shoe or these ribs are actually designed and inspired by the Japanese flag, the Rising Sun flag, which I believe Jordan and Jumpman tried to put out a shoe a couple of years ago that was inspired by that. And, uh, Japanese folk didn't really like it too much, so they actually pulled that shoe from the shelf. Now that's pretty much it as far as the Air Jordan 12 is concerned in the Amma Manier Burgundy Crush colorway. Now, one of the reasons why this shoe is so hotly anticipated is because of the Amma Manier full lineup of shoes. Thus far, Amma Manier has released an Air Jordan 1, 
based off of a metallic OG High 85 shoe in Air Jordan 2, which if I'm not mistaken, draws its inspiration from the OG Chicago. The Air Jordan 3, which if I'm not mistaken, probably comes from the OG White Cement 3. Maybe one day. The Air Jordan 4, which kind of looks like it's an entirely new design. The best I could guess is maybe designed after the Black Cement Jordan 4, but then there's this little thing here and little things all over the place, but that's pretty much my guess. And then again, the Air Jordan 12, which again is based off of the Flu Game Jordan 12. Coming soon, and I hope to be able to bring it to the channel, it's also a white version of this, which is probably based off the OG 12 Cherries, which, you know, I'll do more pieces of search as the time comes. Fingers crossed. Further on down the line, I think there's also some Air Jordan 5s, two colorways. I think another burgundy crush and a white burgundy crush coming out soon. So you guys keep your eyes peeled for that. One cool thing to know about these Amma Meniers is the order in which they release. Now, this is just some speculation, and I think this is proven to be true, but the way these shoes came out was the Jordan 3, the Jordan 1, and then the Jordan 2, which if you put together 312, that's actually the area code for Chicago. Flash forward, you had the Jordan 4, and then the Jordan 12, which is 412, which is actually the area code for Pittsburgh, which is where James Whitner, who is the founder, CEO of the Whitaker Group, actually grew up in the Whitaker Projects. And as we segue into talking about the Whitaker Group and the Whitaker Projects, that is what makes the shoe overall so much more special is the actual storytelling. Each silhouette that comes from Alma Meniere has a story behind it. I believe the Jordan 3 was raised by women. I think the Jordan 2 is one like work harder and there's, there's all these slogans on it. And now this Jordan 12 is one that says she is the blueprint. I actually watched the cinematic and it's a really beautiful, poignant and powerful cinematic. Black is the blueprint is one of the sayings in there and it really highlights how black women are at the forefront of so many things. If you look around at pop culture, black women are at the front of fashion. They're at the front of colloquialism, the slang that they use, the way they dress, the way they eat, the way they talk. A lot of things that black women are at the forefront sometimes gets marginalized. And so the Whitaker group does their best to get these women the love and respect that they deserve in the form of a shoe. So much so that they even stagger their releases to make sure that women have first dibs on a lot of shoes. We saw this one time with the Air Jordan 3, which was a women's shoe, and again with the Air Jordan 12. If you scan your social media, you'll see that there are so many ladies who had the opportunity to buy this shoe, and consequently, men were able to get their pairs as well. Not just saying this because I have this pair. As a matter of fact, to be honest, I actually tripled up because of the raffles. But Alma Meniere, APB, Social Status, and the entire Whitaker Group family of stores have been one of the most fair raffle uh, providers I have seen in quite some time. Overall though, this shoe was absolutely a must for me, not only to have my collection somewhat complete, but because it's such a beautiful and powerful shoe in the message and tone of it. I'm definitely looking forward to future releases, including the five and the upcoming white pair. Now, depending on when you're seeing this, it's gonna be tomorrow, but the shoe drops on February 24th, 2023 on the Amman Year website. The price of the shoes, I believe was $225, don't quote me, I got hit three times on my card. <laughs> I didn't even bother to tally it all up. Now there's no reselling the cards for me, even though I know a lot of you care about that kind of thing. This shoe I think was somewhere in the 280 to $350 range of my size, which it would be a women's size 12 and a half. The other two pairs have already been alley to the people that I'm close with. I cannot be sure if these shoes are ever gonna make their way to the sneakers app, but if they do, that's your other best chance besides trying to hit on Amma Manier website yourself. I'm sure that there's so much more than I'm forgetting, but that's the basic tone of the shoe. This shoe was purposely crafted and put together by the Whitaker Group, James Whitner, and you know, all the designers over there to really, again, shine a light on black women, black people in general. And again, that's not to say that people who aren't black or people who aren't of people of color, men in general, can't wear this shoe. We just want to bring awareness to the entire movement and that's what this shoe is all about if this is your first time here do me a favor hit that subscribe button i plan to give you more reviews hopefully the white pair comes to pass and uh i got more reviews on the way guys so thank you so much for joining me i appreciate you guys for sticking in there with me i'm gonna go ahead and uh put these guys on feet no lace swaps this shoe is beautiful as is and i don't have any rope laces to really fill in here anyway even if i did i'm gonna wear the shoe as is again thank you guys for sticking in there with me until the next one i've been jay shoe fanatic and i'm out of here
Let's go. Oh, the original cut. There it is. I might like it better than the 2020 version. I had it.